Yeah, that crypto nerd. Crypto nerd is freaking me out. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Hi, Isis. How are you doing today? Hey, I am doing good. My name, I just woke up from a nap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just woke up from a nap. Uh, On that cryptocurrency call last night, that thing had me up to about 3 in the morning. I need to get on to that. Um... I'm kind of getting my bearings like that um that call that Tracy did on Monday like brought so much stuff together for me. Wow. Um yeah, so like I I got my live account this week. I've been like marking up my charts and okay. doing, going bananas and shit with Kim um Kim and Luke's call even though Luke hasn't been on this week, but um like I've been following it and like I put in a few little trades on the harmonic scanner and turned a profit. So, I mean, not the harmonic scanner, the, um, the demo account and turned a profit. So like, I'm excited. My goal was like to just go bananas with it this week and then next week to start actually trading on the live account. So, wow. <laughs> that's that's beautiful that's beautiful to hear like you know i'm glad you're finding your foot in and your bearings and you know your balance in it because once you get in that little groove girl it's showtime <laughs> i know and that's what i'm talking about like and then i heard like uh a little snippet of chad's call and they were saying that he like got a 500 hundred dollar deal while he was on the call i was like see that's my fucking life that that's 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 what I'm talking about. Yes. Okay? <laughs> yes. That them indices, they ain't no joke. Like you want your bills paid, that's the one. <laughs> All right, Miss Lady. Well, really quick, it's showtime, it's 602. Um, I'm about to hit this button um on my phone, and it's I mean it's gonna it's gonna plug us up live. And then once it plugs us up live. We're gonna be live. I'm just looking really quick for your bio when you first got started. <laughs> I want to look um, for that really quick so I can edify you. Okay. Give me it one. It should be a picture that has everything in it. Yes, yeah, so on the G12. Um, I gotta just um when I first put you in. Let me see. Where did it go? Oh, there it go. How now? What were you saying about us going to Facebook? Because I got a couple people that are trying to see us from Facebook and okay. I don't know how to do it. Is it even possible since we're doing going through Zoom? Yeah. So what's happening right now is I'm going live on my Facebook through Zoom. And so when okay. I hit this go live button in your notifications, it should say ISIS is going live. So if you take That's your okay. Huh? okay. So I'm gonna just take my phone and do it. Okay. Yeah, and then you can watch me live on your phone, and then you'll hit share watch party. And when you hit okay. share watch party, your friends will be watching. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this button. So like I said, I'm, we're kind of bouncing off the question. So I'll, um, I'll ask you the first three that I came up with, and then you can say, you know, and the cue is, and that's all I have to say about that, Isis. But how do you feel about that? 
<laughs> okay, okay. Okay, that's a little cute. All right. So in five, four, three, two, one. All right, all right. Hello, 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 Facebook world. Peace and divine greetings. I hope everybody is having a spectacular uh, Thursday today. I have a phenomenal, phenomenal guest today that I'm honored to be having on this platform with me, uh, sharing such a, a strong topic. And, uh, you know, when it comes to money and uh, having the money mindset and just cultivating the money mindset. So I have Miss um, Capricorn Shamanis. Uh, she's been an advocate for uh, rights for women and children for more than two decades. Uh, you know, her philosophy is spiritual growth through activation, education, and manifestation. Um, uh, after studying you know, and practicing uh, several healing modalities over about 10 years. Um, she's carved out her own little niche as a self-mastery and healing coach. So um, some of her specialties that she, uh, she really um, allows spirit to walk her through, you guys, is, um, you know, discovering and transmuting, um, I mean, discovering and transforming and trans transmutation, um, angelic work, candle magic, uh, mediumship. She, uh, she does uh, spiritual, um, she's spiritual guidance, uh, Reiki, um, you know, womb wisdom teacher, and so much more. When I tell you this lady is a plethora of information, she's somebody you definitely want to have in your uh, circle, not just because of based off of all of her gifts, but she has the type of personality that when she comes into a building, she really, really radiates it and she really rocks the house. So without further ado, let's <laughs> get deep into this, to this, uh, this interview today. How are you doing today? Hi, Isis. Um, I'm doing great. How are you? I'm so happy. To, to be on with you and I love the introduction. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> you are so much welcome. So we're gonna go ahead and dive in it. I got a couple questions that I have to ask you that a couple of uh, the guests um, in, the, in the cyber world were wanting to know. But the first, because we're talking about, you guys, we're talking about a money mindset. We're talking about a prosperity mindset. So, I mean, the first question is, you know, why is cultivating a healthy relationship with money important? Um, that question is, um, goodness. First of all, anybody that is on the planet today should be able to answer that question. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, we all have a relationship. Um, we all have a relationship with, with money. And so, a healthy relationship is really what you're looking for because a lot of people on the planet have an unhealthy relationship with money. Um, they are um, thinking of money as uh, a piece of paper. They are interacting or um, feeling like the only way that money can come to them is through their, you know, their job, their nine to five job or whatever their, you know, their hourly schedule is. But their relationship with money is relegated to that source and then relegated to the ideas and the mindset that they were programmed with, be it from family, be it from religion, be it from culture, cultural views, um, things that they themselves made up based upon experiences that they've had with money. And most of that is to be right about something that they've already made up about money with regards to the other things we talked about from what their family told them, what mom and dad told them money was and how money was to be used. Um, what, you know, what their peers told them in their social settings or whatever, but they haven't really, really brought consciousness to their relationship with money and understanding um, it that it's more than a piece of paper. It's actually not a piece of paper. You know what I mean? Yes. So um, that's what I have to say about it, Isis. What do you have to say? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? Yeah, I like that. I like that right there. <laughs> wow. Well, you know, you pretty much, uh, 
you pretty much laid it out right there, especially when you came, you know, from the angle of, you know, uh, childhood and how we've been programmed from a, from a child to think that money is the enemy, I mean, enemy. I mean, and one thing that I would definitely add on to, you know, the importance on cultivating that relationship with money is so that it can come to you. Yes. Um, is it, you know, it's the energy flow. It's just like, um, yes. you know, if it was a person, uh, you know, if, if, if somebody was talking bad about you, you wouldn't want to be around them. And so it's the same thing with money that I think sometimes we fail to realize when we use those naughty words or, you know, I'm broke, you know, I don't have any money right now. You know, we, we don't even realize sometimes that, you know, we're, we're creating the space for money not to come to us because we're repelling it versus exactly. attracting it to us. So Exactly. So, so exactly. That, yes, yes, yes. So check this out. This kind of goes right into the first question. Let's go ahead and bring it to this next one is, you know, how do we, uh, how do we deprogram poverty from our minds? Like, how do we just eradicate that? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, what are some ways <laughs> first of all you have to come to awareness that you're in a poverty mindset okay um and then you also need to come to a space where you're choosing to do something about that poverty mindset because people can you know have awareness we hear people talking about it you know, talking about not having money or living in the space of lack or complaining about people that do have it and things of that nature. But it's not until you actually decide that you want to do something different that you can actually make that shift, that you can actually um, start to make the transition. And so from that space of awareness and then that space of making a decision to, uh, to change the pattern that you're currently operating out of, then the next thing you need to do is figure out what your vision is for money. What is it that you want? What's, what's the relationship that you want to have with money? How much money do you want to have? Um, where do you want to get this money from? What are you willing to do to, to, um, to attract it, to, to utilize it? Um, really, and then, you know, cultivating from that, that, that space. So you need to paint a picture, figure out what it is that you want to do with it. And then from there, um, once you've gotten the vision and you understand what the vision is, then you want to start to bring in other tools that can help you. Um, one of the things that I do is activation. So it's a form of um, energy work, energy healing, where um, I channel a particular type of energy for the people that I'm working with, the listeners um, are the ones receiving the attunements. And then they're able to sit in that energy and I go through a process of reprogramming it. So in the case of money, if we're coming from a poverty mindset, then I would be triggering that inside of you and then supporting you with calling in a prosperity mindset. So activations are like my go-to for shifting energy. Um, it's a process of alchemy. Um, the next thing that I would say is, um, repetition mm -hmm. once you got that vision going and you've decided that this is where you're going and this is what you're willing to do for it then it needs to be repeated over and over and over and over and over again because what you're doing is reprogramming your subconscious mind it's the part of the mind that's running running underneath it all most of what you're doing most of the stuff that you're on autopilot with, it's because of the programming, the, the belief systems, the thought forms that are living um, and you know, expanding and growing in your subconscious mind. So you want to do something to counteract that. Again, not just plugging my stuff, but it's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, the activations, one of the things that I challenge people to do when they're purchasing the recorded, the pre-recorded activations is to listen to them repeatedly because the more you listen, it is again reprogramming the subconscious mind. And then you'll, you know, you'll start to see things shifting in, in your reality. And then when you do that, when, once things begin to shift, you need to take action that goes back to the part where it's like, what are you willing to do to have this different state of mind, this different state of mind? Well, uh, when, when things start to shift, you'll start to see reflections, opportunities to have more money will come, opportunities to, um, 
to challenge beliefs that you have re related to lack um, and scarcity will show up so that you can take action. You need to do a thing, a specific thing that will shift that in, in your reality. And a lot of times it's almost as if the subconscious mind of the universe is saying, hey, I know you said you wanted more money, or I know you said you wanted more of that. Okay, here, here's an opportunity. And then you get to choose. Are you going to actually choose and do the action that supports what you say you want, your vision? Or are you going to go back into your old pattern and bullshit yourself out of your blessing and your opportunity? So it's a combination of all of those things. It's not one thing. And then here's the thing, folks. As you grow in it, it's not going to happen overnight. Most of the time, it's not, you're not going to go from having $5 in your bank account to a million dollars. It just doesn't fucking happen that way. Okay, it just doesn't. Okay, um, but it's a st it's, it's steps, and so as you work your way through the steps, and you'll know what the steps are there on, on your path. As you work your way through the steps, the the actions start to change. You might need to, you know, if you've gotten to the point where your your bank account is now at five hundred from five dollars, then you might have to do something else to move you from 500 to 1,000 or from 1,000 to 50,000. You know what I'm saying? So you still have to stay with it. You have to keep working um, the process and um, be conscious in your present moment so that you'll know what the next right step is for you. So that's, that's my thoughts. What are yours? <laughs> wow, I mean, I mean, you pretty much, uh... You pretty much laid it down, to be honest. I mean, uh, one thing I'll just like kind of just um, piggyback off of what you said was that repetition. That, that, that repetition is the key because the repetition is what has us in the first place with the mindset of poverty and lack from the childhood that you spoke exactly. about before. So, exactly. <laughs> so the programming. The programming. So it's like the repetition it's not a good or bad thing, but it can be used for you or against you. So, exactly. <laughs> so now we have to take it from a state of where we were used to like using it against us and then using it in our favor. So like you said, that repetition, tapping into that subconscious mind. And if I could just share a little bit about, you know, how I got started on this path. Like I didn't come from a, a family that spoke about money in a nice way or that treated money in a nice way. So I didn't have that example. But like you said, it's not no overnight thing. I had to first become consciously aware of my situation and where I was heading and then take direct action to make a difference. And sometimes I feel, like, I feel like that's the missing key. I feel like everybody, you know, they want the lavish life. Uh, you know, they, they don't want to work the jobs. But that action and the putting in the work um, sometimes just doesn't click. And it's just, you know, simply from that, that, that old program. And so, so yeah, so that, that, that one right there was a, a deep one. Um, well, let me ask you this, because it, it still kind of ties in and what we're saying, this is my third question for you, is, is abundance outside of us? Is money and wealth and abundance outside of us? No, no. <laughs> Everything is inside of you. You are it. You have always been it. You will always be it. Um, and it's up to you to recognize that you are it. You have an abundance. We could take it as simple as cells. You have an abundance of cells within your body. You have an abundance of organisms um, or organs within your, your body. You're not lacking anything. You have an abundance of consciousness within you. You're not lacking anything. And so whatever it is you are calling to, you are manifesting um, or actualizing in your reality, it's coming from inside of you. That's why you got to start with the mind. That's why you got to start with um, the, the consciousness, the awareness. The first part was coming into a, a space of awareness. And the, all the steps that preceded required you to be conscious in your, you know, in your actions. Um, so... It's, it's not outside of you. All of it is in you. The programming that's being changed is within you. And when you change the programming, the belief systems that are making up what you are seeing in your reality, then you'll see your reality start to change. Wow. <laughs> 
Wow. So simple that you can miss it sometimes, Miss Capri. So simple that you can miss it, right? For sure. And, for sure. <laughs> I mean, um, you pretty much said it mouthful. Um, let me see if I can piggyback off of that. Like, I, I would just like to say I'm reading this. Um, I don't know where my book is. I thought I was around here. But I'm reading this book called The 40 Day Prosperity Principles. And that's my one. And it just talks about, you know, we all come from a, a, a all knowing power, no matter what name, you know, everybody has different religions. Some people say Jesus, God, Buddha, universe, whatever your title yeah. is, we come from that, um, that, 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 uh, that supply, that everlasting unlimited supply. So if we are coming from that and that supply is within us, then like you said, it starts from within and, and then it comes out. And that's what I've been learning. When you switch your desires on, yeah, you want the brand new car. Yeah, you want the brand new house. But when you go within and you harness that energy and you magnetize and you manifest and you bring the car and, and the house to you because you're tapping into your spiritual currency. The yeah. type of currency yeah. that can't even be touched. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Wow. And wow. when you're in flow with that currency, that's, that's the energy right there that draws the money that you're looking for. Because, again, it's not a piece of paper. It's an energy stream. Yes. And shout out to those earrings. Are those money earrings? Yes, I wore them just because we were talking money today. <laughs> oh, wow. I see those earrings. I was like, those earrings is dope. I had to get me some of those. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Yes, yes. You guys, we're about midway with our questions. And really quick, I just want you guys, if you guys are feeling this, if you're learning something, I just want you guys to just drop 77, you know, the number seven completion in the chat bar. Let us know how you're feeling. Let us know. Let us feel some energy because we're giving it to you guys. And I hope you guys are taking notes because this is one thing that we say in our organization. And what is that? What is that? <laughs> Money makers or note takers, baby. So definitely got to take those notes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so let's dive into this fourth question. We've got about two more after that. And this one, we're getting really new with the nitty gritty. So like um, for you, like what has been the most challenging thing you had to overcome to find success in your field and your choosing. Uh, for me, it was fear, mm. fear, fear, fear. My, my programming was very much steeped in, in fear, a fear narrative. Um, and so a lot of what I created for myself came through fear. Now, you know, depending on how you look at it, and compared to some other people, I mean, you could say that I created a lot. I crafted a lot out of fear, but it also cost me a lot as well. Um, so I had to do a lot of work with my mindset mm. um, to, to um, peel back the layers of fear, to challenge the fear narratives that, you know, were keeping me in, in my boxes and um, preventing me from actualizing the things that I actually wanted to have and experience in, in my life. So I would say for me, it was fear. Yeah. What do you think it was for you? Sheesh, uh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think that for, to be honest, the challenging thing was not being aware. <laughs> <laughs> just simply not being aware of my power, um, yeah. simply not being aware of my purpose. So it was challenging because I feel like when you don't have that, that, that um, clear vision of where yeah. you want to go and then you're not tapping into your, 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 your true purpose is going to have you live out of alignment and then everything that's coming is going to be challenging because I wasn't in alignment with what I was really supposed to do. You know, really, really quick, you know, I started off and I'm still am a spiritual healer. I just come at it now in a financial aspect. But when I first started, you know, I was selling different products and read, I was doing the whole nine yards and yes, I was helping people, but I kept finding these hardships and it was simply because I wasn't 
expanding myself. I was keeping myself in like a category of being on the streets, you know, selling my, uh, my jewelry and different things like that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I knew that I had a bigger calling. And, and the moment I became aware of, damn, I need more money than what I'm making right now. Because if I want to be able to help more people, this little cute, you know, money that's coming in from selling these, you know, these juries and different things. I can't really uh, reach a lot of people like that. So really, yeah. I would say, you know, the biggest challenge for me was just being unaware. <laughs> yeah. And that struggle mindset, it, it, it gets a lot of people. A lot of people think that it, it's necessary. And a lot of healers think that you have to be in it to be an effective healer. That goes to, to me, the category of religious programming um, in a lot of regards, you know, the concept of the humility and the piousness and all of that stuff. Not that anything is wrong with those things, but it's also nothing wrong with you, to your point, having what you need to be able to live comfortably so that you can, um, facilitate the healing or support people in facilitating their own healing. So, yeah. And a lot of people aren't aware of it, Isis. So mm. yeah, I, I like your answer. Awareness. Wow. Awareness. Yes. Woo, that word. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, check this out. We have about two questions. I was super excited to get you on this call because I know how busy you are. So I want to respect your time. Uh, the next question that I have for you is, um, you know, what brought you happiness? Uh, the, well, I would say what brought you the most joy aside from, you know, money? Um, freedom. <laughs> Drop the mic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I could go so many places with that. I can go so many places with that, guys. But it's been, it's been the freedom. Yeah. The freedom that happened when I took the leap. And every time I take another leap, every time I unlock myself from yet another prison of my own creation, um, every time I walk past, uh, you know, uh, a milestone that at a different time in my life, I felt like I wasn't going to be able to, you know, I, I won't ever be able to reach that milestone. You know what I mean? Um, and then I find myself in my reality, like, oh shit, not only did I reach it, but I exceeded it. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So the freedom from, from, from that space and being able to look back and like, oh my God, um, I, 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 I outgrew another box. Um, and I'm able to do things that I used to dream about doing. Um, move, I'm able to move around in ways that I used to dream about being able to move around. And this is now my current reality. This is my, now my default. So, yeah. Wow. How about you? So, wow. So basically you're saying like freedom, basically just being an entrepreneur and be able to have that, that freedom to do what you want to do. Um, I like to piggyback off that too. If I could just say, you know, what brings me joy, three things is yes, freedom, time, freedom, being able, I like, I, li I literally just, uh, you know, woke up from a nap, you know? So just being able to set my schedule, uh, make like be in control of my mind. Cause some, some, sometimes I tell people, well, most times I tell people, somebody that controls your time controls your mind. So if you don't dictate your time, you're not really controlling your mind because somebody outside of you is letting you know, hey, you got to come to work here. then. You got to take lunch on this time. You got to take sick leave on this time. So just being able to have my own time has definitely brought me joy. But most of all, to be honest, what brings me joy is seeing my community Thrive. Seeing my G12, shout out to Generation 12, seeing everybody. Yes, yeah. yes baby. <laughs> seeing everybody thrive. Like, I literally, I have, a, I'm looking at my whiteboard like right now. Like, when I wake up in the morning, I got my community and um, goals like right on the board. And when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, okay, cool. So who can I help? Okay, she need $200 to leave her job. Okay, he need that to do that. So really what brings me joy is seeing other people be authentically them, step outside of their comfort zone, do things that they wouldn't do before. Like, to be honest, like that's my new, like my, my new joy thing. And that's literally what's been, what's been keeping me, you know, narrow on this path 
consistently, you know, being in this field of entrepreneurship and being and being a forex trader. And that kind of brings me into like the next question because you know, shout out to Miss Capri. She's definitely one of our um you know, um, one of our Forex traders in our community. And uh, we really just been getting deep into this, you know, this um, group economics. So Capri, like what advice do you wish someone had given you as a new trader? <laughs> well, I think the advice that um, I see more and more that sticks out is really just believe in yourself. Mm. And I actually did get that advice. You know, I've heard you say it. Um, several times and so uh it's the it's the piece that has been most beneficial it comes back to it because as i've i'm changing my relationship with money and learning how money operates in the um the field of forex um <laughs> and the different the different way it flows and um the with the trades and the pairs and different things what I've had to go through was kind of, again, breaking out of my, the, own, the constraints of my own mind, things that I made up about why, you know, how this was going to be hard or how it was going to be a challenge or having time to do this and all of these different things. And so I just keep coming back to the believe in yourself. And from there, it's like, all right, you can figure this shit out. And, you know, that, that's been my go-to. <laughs> what would you say yours has been <laughs> wow 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 that's a good question I'm, I'm thinking you know like i said three years or three years strong um what let me see what advice do i wish someone had given me um she's that's that i'm a little stumped on that one um i would say if i would have had the mindset early on on just automatically focusing on because i'm a community builder i love to help other people learn this i come through like harriet Harry, harriet tumman with this information because i feel like it's really i feel you like really do though <laughs> i really <laughs> like it <laughs> i like it that is so fucking appropriate <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Trying to free as many slaves as possible with it. Because, I mean, really, Capri, because if we don't figure out a way um, to get our money to work for us, we're going to continue to work for it. So early on, I, I, I would say I wish I had the mindset more on just automatically focusing on other people's goals. So not to say that, you know, my heart is always in the place of helping people. That's just my makeup. But I feel like... um you know, part of leadership is just a title and it's the lowest title you can have because you're always of service, always of service. You're, you put people first, you know, before you. And so I, I kind of wish that I already kind of knew these jewels because I feel like I could have been able to help so many other people straight from the get go if I kind of would have had some of that sauce. But at the same time, I know the word time is things I must experience. So I had mm -hmm. to go through things and grow through things to be the person I am now and to still be humbly enough uh, humble enough to know that this is just a start. There's so much more for me to so learn. So much more. So yeah. much more for me to learn. So um, that's what I would say. Just, um, just really, you know, just having off the bat, just having that mindset of look like I'm just going directly in here, just crushing people's goals. Because by default, you know, the more you, you help uh, other people crush their goals, you'll crush your goals by default. Um, and, and, and not to come from a position where it's like, well, I'm just doing this because, you know, I, I want to, you know, I want to be able to get something from this. If you're coming from a place like that, it's not going to come to you because you're not coming from a heart space. So it definitely has to come from a heart space. So are you still there? Hello? Hello, hello, hello.